My name is Brett Will, a student at Pinoa High School. With this video, I hope to inform people about the many threats to Hawaii's coral reefs and what the average person can do to help solve these problems. But first, I'd like to start off with some facts about coral reefs. Whether you are a visitor to Hawaii or a full-time resident, you've no doubt heard about its many coral reefs as they play an important part in Hawaii's marine life. Corals themselves are typically white, but only gain their colorful hues because of the zooxanthellae, a type of algae, that lives inside of them. The zooxanthellae, as shown here, provide nutrients to the coral through photosynthesis, and so play an important part in coral reef ecology. The excess nutrients from the zooxanthellae, along with the rock-like structure of the coral, create a suitable environment for many different types of organisms, supporting about a quarter of all marine life as a whole. Although coral reefs are so pivotal to our oceans, they require a very specific set of conditions to be able to survive. And with so many different forms of human intervention, such as pollution, global warming, and even just touching coral, many reefs around the world are quickly dying off. For example, carbon dioxide increases ocean acidity, and if the 3% annual increase of CO2 emissions continues, then by 2050, most areas of the ocean will become inhospitable to coral. Some of you may be wondering what exactly happens to a coral when its environment is polluted. Well, the result is something called coral bleaching, which is when, while under stress, a coral releases its zooxanthellae and eventually dies. Hawaii's had its fair share of negative interactions with its environment. One such example was when Hanama Bay was named Hawaii's first marine life conservation district in 1967. At the time, the taking of marine life was strictly prohibited but there were no other rules or regulations as to what people could do once they got there. Decades of unbridled tourism without an education system led to the degradation of Hanama's coral reefs. It wasn't until the 90s, when the government implemented new rules and regulations, that the situation started to turn around. As you can see, and as I mentioned earlier, Hanama Bay is a perfect example of Hawaii's oceans, and is also a major tourist hotspot. Although the new rules and regulations at Hanama, such as the education program, have certainly helped, you can still blatantly see the damage done by comparing the reef along the shoreline to the reef near the open ocean. In order to get a better idea of how these changes have affected Hanama, I decided to interview one of the educational staff there. My name is Janelle Souza. I'm a student education assistant here. I've been working here for about four months now. Previous to that, I was working in the DOE. And um, I'm also a full-time student in the Hawaiian Pacific Studies program at UH West Oahu. Uh, how many tourists do you see here um, in about a year, and what impact do you feel as though they have on the coral or the marine life here? Um, well, on average, every year there's about maybe a million visitors, um, and it can range anywhere from a hundred a day to thousands. Um, they definitely play a huge part in the preservation or degradation of the coral reef, but that's also why our education program was implemented. I mean. With the education program, they go through the orientation. They have us as staff members, volunteers, just to educate them of staying off the reef, not feeding the fish. And that way, everyone's a part of taking care. It's not just the staff involved, it's everyone involved in actually coming here, that we're a marine life conservation district and a nature preserve, and that we're all trying to help take care of it. So I understand that Hanama Bay was named a marine life preservation about 50 or 60 years ago, but it was really only until the 90s that we started to really understand what it takes to make a marine life preserve. Uh, so what steps have been taken since then, and what effect do you think it's had on the marine life here? Um, well, it's definitely taken a big step in the last 10 to 15 years. I mean, before, even though we were a marine life conservation district, it was more just a title. There wasn't enough done, I think. But definitely with implementation of, implementation, excuse me, of the education program, we now have the entire visitor center. It's all focused on education, and that education has helped a lot. Um, we limit the amount of visitors that come in. Um, everyone has to see the orientation video. We limit the number of cars here. I mean, everything has helped um, all the way down the line from not putting parking meters in the parking lot because that will affect erosion and that will affect what's happening on the beach. I mean, we've brought in sand to replace the sand that has already eroded. We've stopped um, any of the feeding of the animals that way. Um, the ecosystem can live, even though there aren't as many fish as there were, say, 10, 15, 20 years ago, 
the fish here are healthier because they're living off the algae, they're living off the corals, they're living off things that they're supposed to actually be eating, not bread, not peas. And the clarity and health of the actual seawater is a lot better. It's not as murky as it used to be. Um, everything has definitely improved and you know it's just cycle of life has gotten a lot better for these little fishes and coral and the rocks and everything yeah <laughs> and how important do you think it is that we continue to preserve coral like we've been doing at Hanama Bay I mean I just think it's pivotal um, I think not enough people realize how interconnected our world is as far as on the local level yeah we can do um, everything to help protect Hanalma and that's great but until everyone all around the world can realize that um, you know we have to figure that out because everyone looks at the ocean as what separates us but in reality it's what connects us and we as an example you take a look at the northwestern Hawaiian Islands their coral reefs there and even though there's no one around no one to necessarily contribute to the harm of that environment you look at the great Pacific you know garbage patch and it's being created and it's starting to strangle part of the coral reef there because of people's neglect of the oceans where they live currently, whether it's from California, Asia, all around. The way the currents work, it just all swirls and connects. And unless everyone gets involved and everyone helps out, there's only so much you can do on the local level. But no matter what, it's still pivotal that everyone helps out at their own local level, not just here at Hanalma. If you would like to help preserve Hawaii's coral reefs, there's just a few things you need to remember when you go to the beach. Number one, don't touch the coral. Many types of coral that branch out, like this finger coral, will tend to break off if you touch them even lightly. Number two, leave everything the way you found it. Some forms of marine life are sensitive to light and cannot handle being out of the darkness for too long. Number three, try to use waterproof sunscreen. Using a waterproof sunscreen ensures that you don't release any harmful chemicals or foreign oils into the water. If you'd like to take a more active role in protecting Hawaii's coral reefs, one thing you could do is to switch to biopesticides instead of chemical pesticides. No matter how far inland you live, everything will end up in the ocean eventually, and biopesticides have much less of an impact on the environment than do chemical pesticides. The opportunity cost to this, however, is that biopesticides tend to cost a little more than chemical pesticides. You should also help to support coral preservation efforts on the local and national level, because although there are government organizations out there dedicated to coral preservation, government spending can only go so far, and everyone's help is needed. Especially in a place like Hawaii, where coral reefs accounted for over $250 million in revenue in 1991 for fisheries, commercial sales, and tourism. For me, this project really taught me a lot about how much we should be protecting our coral reefs. My experience from Mipi Bio helped me to understand a few of the terms that I came across in my research, but I really feel like I end this project knowing a lot more about the place that I live in than I did going in.